Uh, to some extent, we might even be lucky to see some policies being implemented very slowly because they are so harmful. Uh, it is a counterintuitive way of looking at things, but we think quite, quite accurate. South Africa's economy is in desperate need of reform. In response to the various crises affecting South Africa's economy, President Sol Ramaphosa has initiated Operation Bulindlela, which is designed to introduce a range of policy reforms. But do these reforms go wide enough and deep enough to unlock growth in the country? We at the CRA are somewhat skeptical. Joining me to discuss is John Endres, director of the CRA, and also the co-author of our weekly risk alert, which goes out to clients every Monday morning at 7 a.m. So John, in this week's edition of the risk alert, we raise this issue of policy reform. What is your reading of Operation Volendlela? And do you think that these reforms go far enough? So Operation Volendlela was established as a joint initiative of the presidency and the treasury to help uh, unlock blockages, reform blockages, and move ahead with reforms. And this really is the flagship, uh, I think, reform unit of the presidency and of the president's campaign to introduce reforms in South Africa. Um, the president, as you say, in his newsletter announced that progress was being made on some of the reform objectives uh, and uh, was quite proud to, to point that out and said that uh, many of these reforms were going to take quite a long time to uh, make their impact felt and also that they would require some changes in institutions as well. And the president's message really was that South Africans should be patient, but that they had uh, something to look forward to, which was an improvement in the circumstances, the economic, the social political circumstances in South Africa as a result of these reforms. Now, our take on this is that uh, a bit of skepticism is uh, applicable in this case. And the reason we say that is because of the types of reforms that are included under Operation Volendlela. All right, so John, there is this heavy focus on network industries. It's obviously very important. We have ongoing load shedding happening at the moment, but I think the energy sector is a really good example of the lack of progress that is happening. So we have seen this lift of the cap on private energy generation up to 100 megawatts. Minerals Council is saying this is completely uh, mired in red tape. So even though you don't need permission to generate private electricity, you still need to apply to NERSA uh, for regulatory approvals. There are environmental clearances that need to be undertaken. And we're not really seeing since uh, 2021, when this announcement was made, meaningful additions to the supply of electricity from the private sector. So what is your read on the load shedding crisis and what that reveals about the state of reform in the country? Yeah, that's a good example. Um, so as you said, the focus of these reforms is very much on network industries. So it's on water, power, uh, communications, uh, and infrastructure. Um, but the, the point here is that these reforms seem quite modest and also very slow moving. And if we consider the scale of the challenges that South Africa is facing, you do get a sense of a disconnect between the speed with which these reforms are being approached, their profundity, uh, and the scale of the challenges that we face. So electricity is exactly one of those examples. Uh, currently, we've got load shedding again. Uh, we've already exceeded the number of days with load shedding in 2022 that we had achieved at the same point in time in 2021. Uh, and it certainly seems that our electricity grid is continues to be unable to meet the demand that is being placed upon it. Uh, under these circumstances, we think that a lot more pressure should be applied to moving far quicker with the reforms than is being applied at the moment. To name just two examples that the president highlighted of reforms that had been successfully achieved. One was the creation of a national ports authority that took over 15 years uh, and another example was the release of Spectrum that took over 10 years. So this is not really a sign uh, that there's a sense of urgency in government, that things need to be addressed very quickly, very decisively, uh, and improved at, at very short notice. But it's not only that, David. It's not so much the fact that uh, progress is slow on these reforms, but also that they leave out some major areas in which uh, fundamental changes are required. And those are not being addressed at all. And what might those areas be, John? So the focus is on infrastructure. And these are nice showy projects where you can say, um, you know, we have to spend a lot of money to make things better. Uh, and everybody will immediately see the purpose of that. But what is being left out are things like, for example, 
expropriation without compensation, which, which remo remains firmly on the table, the introduction of the national health insurance system, um, as well as labor regulation and the education system uh, localization. So really uh, policy areas that could be changed with, at little cost, but that would change the investment environment in South Africa very dramatically and at short notice. And we believe that it is these areas that actually require far more attention than infrastructure does, as important as it may be. And John, I see a lot of commentary in the media, people saying, well, we've got the right policies in place, we just need better implementation from the government. We at the Center for Risk Analysis, we reject that argument. We say that, well, actually, it's the policies themselves that are the problem. Do you care to elaborate on that? You no, know, in, in some ways, what we see is a, a bit of a, a sleight of hand, a distraction. In other words, you focus the attention on infrastructure, for example, in order to divert attention from the other harmful policy areas that I've just listed. And the second point is, as you say, uh, implementation. So it's always uh, a nice uh, excuse to say, well, the reason we're not making more progress is because we've got great policies, but we're really very slow in implementing them. Uh, that is not, not ultimately the problem. Uh, to some extent, we might even be lucky to see some policies being implemented very slowly because they are so harmful. Uh, it is a counterintuitive way of looking at things, but we think quite, quite accurate that uh, slow motion, a slow movement on harmful policies is probably better than fast movement on such policies. And that includes, as I said, property rights being challenged uh, and, and the, the national health system being, being uh, nationalized. And I think a very good illustration of the negative impact of policy on the economy is in the mining sector, as we highlighted in our risk alert this week. And although rents from mining industry uh, revenues have, have been going up, it's been filling the government's coffers, uh, there is a massive opportunity cost there because of the uh, lack of new mineral rights uh, licenses that have been issued, uh, prospecting rights, uh, as well as the blockages in the ports. And we reported there in the risk alert that it was a, an opportunity cost of about 35 billion rand that, that the sector has, has missed out on um, because of some of those constraints. The Fraser Institute has also lowered South Africa's ranking in terms of its mining competitiveness now down to 75th out of 84 countries. So that's a pretty poor showing. Uh, what do you think this illustrates, this example illustrates about the, the impact of policy, John? Well, if you go into the detail on why the mining sector is performing so poorly, um, certainly power is going to be one of those reasons. But over and above that, we see that uh, mining exploration is very, very low in South Africa in terms of investment levels. And the reason for that is that there's a huge backlog at the Department of Mineral Resources in terms of processing applications and uh, requests for transfer of mining licenses. And the reason why there is the backlog is because the department is using a paper-based system because the computerized system that introduced in 2011 called SAMRA is not working properly. Uh, the department would have the option and indeed has gone to market to, sign, to find a better system, uh, but it applied the preferential procurement regulations of the government which precluded some very uh, obvious choices in terms of supplying an off-the-shelf uh, functioning effective system for that sector. Um, and in this case, there was a, a Cape Town-based company that was excluded based on those preferential procurement regulations for which the department could have applied for an exemption but didn't. And as a result of which the uh, tender process, which concluded in August last year uh, uh, without any successful bidder is now stalled. Uh, it's completely stuck. And it means that the processing of licensing and prospecting applications continues to be stalled at the Department of Mineral Resources. John Endres, thank you very much. Let's hand over to you, our audience. What do you make of Operation Vulenglela? Leave your thoughts down in the comment section below. Also, a quick reminder that we at the CRA have, in addition to our YouTube channel, a range of other products and services, including our weekly risk alert, which formed the basis of today's discussion. If you are interested in these products, you can join us on our 30-day free trial. There is a link down in the description below where you can find out more information. My name is David Ansara. This is the CRA. Until next time, take care.